What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we're talking about ice baths. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment for the algorithm. Ice baths, cold water immersion. It is the latest hot thing. All of your favorite influencers are doing it. All of your favorite podcasters are doing it. Should you be doing it? Well, first off, why would you do cold water immersion? One, because apparently it looks really cool because if you do it on TikTok, you get a bunch of views. I just see so many people doing this on TikTok. It reminds me of doing fasted cardio, wearing a black hoodie on the stair stepper, like, like 15 years ago in the fitness industry. Everybody was doing that. They looked all serious and they're sweating a lot. And they're like, yeah. And now it's like, I'm enlightened and I'm health and I'm a millionaire because I do ice baths. I never thought cold water immersion would become an identity, but apparently it has. Apparently you become Bruce Wayne when you do cold water immersion. Okay, I'm done. I'm sorry, I'm done making fun of it. So cold water immersion does seem to have some positive effects on recovery. Uh, it reduces inflammation, it decreases delayed onset muscle soreness, and so those things can have a positive benefit for athletes who are looking to recover before another training session. However, we do know that cold water immersion can actually attenuate hypertrophy, meaning it can impede muscle building. Now you can still build muscle if you're doing cold water immersion, but they do show that you build less muscle doing consistent cold water immersion compared to people who don't. Why is that? Well, a lot of people like to think about things like inflammation or oxidation as just black or white, good or bad. Whenever we hear the word inflammation, we always think inflammation, bad. Take it as low as possible. Well, the problem is building muscle actually requires a certain level of inflammation. For example, there was a study a while back where they gave ibuprofen post-workout to young people who were healthy, and they found that it significantly decreased hypertrophy. But when they gave ibuprofen to old people, it actually slightly enhanced their hypertrophic response. So how do we explain that? As you get older, you have a higher basal level of inflammation. But when you're younger, you have a lower basal level of inflammation in general, on average. So this suggests that there's actually kind of a optimal inflammation level for building muscle. And if you go too high, or too low, you may impede that process. So am I saying cold water immersion is a bad idea? No, I'm not. It depends on your particular sport. For example, if you are a mixed martial artist and you have to fight for a living, well, then you have to fight in training to get ready to fight in a cage or a ring or whatever it is. That takes a big toll on your body and doing cold water immersion may help with soreness and it may help you be able to do another training session a little bit more quickly than if you didn't do it. So in that case, those folks aren't nearly as worried about muscle hypertrophy as they are about being able to be recovered for their next session so they can get ready for a fight. Same thing may go for endurance athletes. They might not care if they don't gain another you know, few ounces of muscle over a six month period. But if we're talking about people who do sports where lean mass is a predictor of performance, say powerlifting, Olympic lifting, American football, strongman. These are all sports where a person's lean mass can be a good predictor of their performance on competition day. So for them, cold water immersion, probably not a great idea. Am I saying you can never do it? No. People also ask me like, oh, well, if cold water immersion attenuates hypertrophy, what about cold showers? I doubt cold showers would do it. With cold water immersion, your entire body is surrounded by very cold water. That is much different than just standing under a cold shower. Now, am I also saying that as somebody who wants to increase muscle mass, that you can never do cold water immersion? If you got through like a peaking block for a powerlifting meet, and you're feeling really beat up, really sore, and you are worried about recovering in enough time to be ready for your competition, then maybe you would do a cold water immersion for a few days because at that point, recovering is more important 
than perhaps losing out on a few grams of muscle mass. Same thing for playing American football or strongman. Doing cold water immersion so that you can recover to be ready for a competition may be better in the short term than those extra you know, tiny amounts of muscle that you might have built by impeding that. But what I would say is if you're in the off season from football or you don't have a competition coming up and you're a powerlifter, Olympic lifter, or strongman, I would mostly try to avoid cold water immersion because again, it does seem like it can have an effect on attenuating hypertrophy. And this appears to be through reducing the rate of post-workout muscle protein synthesis. So again, if you're not an athlete who's worried about muscle mass or it's not your primary outcome driver, then feel free to do CWI. But if you are somebody who's worried about your lean mass, then you probably want to limit it. All right, guys, if you like this video, like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you really feel like, man, these research breakdowns help me so much, it makes things much more clear, make sure you check out our research review reps, which is research explained with practical summaries. Every month we review five studies, including studies on cold water immersion, which we've done previously, and we break them down in a way that's practical and easy to understand. We tell you what the researchers tested, how they tested it, what they found, and then we tell you what it means for you in your training. We also tell you if we disagree with the researcher's conclusion based on the data that they found. So we just take it and we simplify it. We don't use a bunch of unnecessary jargon. It's a great value. When you sign up, you not only get access to our current issue, but all of our archived previous issues, and you get access to our 50-page ebook, our How to Read Research Guide, which will walk you through step-by-step step how to get some basic skills so that you can read research and understand it yourself.